Welcome to Calling All Growers. I'm your host, Liz Grow, and I'm so excited to be here with you tonight. As you know, growers are the superstars of the cannabis industry, and there's nothing more valuable than to learn from the best. Well, tonight, I have two very special guests for you, Michael Camp of Hero Pack and Paul J. Von Hartman, cannabis scholar and environmental advocate from Oregon. Welcome, gentlemen. How are you? Doing well. Thank you for uh, having us here. Uh, blessed to be here and uh, partake in your show and love everything I've watched so far of you and look forward to learning more about you guys and uh, how your world works. So happy to share any cultivation advice. Uh, like you said, I am uh, the founder of Hero Packs and it's H-A-E-R-O-P-A-C-K with a Z at the end. And it is uh, an NFT campaign to seed the world and showcase uh, Breeders like myself uh, in, in, in ways to, of IP protection and monetization and all the difficult uh, streams to navigate in business, let alone in the cannabis industry. So uh, I do a lot of digital focus. I've got a growing competition called Mocana Cup right now at mocanacup.com. And I get to use these strains that I've created that are supported now with these Hero Pack NFTs which uh, have a lot of utility from seeds themselves, and then also discounts in the store and all kinds of fun uh, elevated uh, levels of participation and then evolves with the project itself. A uh, huge focus of what we do is to give back. So we do have a philanthropical side that does give back to uh, many of those in needs. A lot of with Hero Packs focuses on the cannabis industry and those 420 POWs, uh, veterans, and, and then just you know patients themselves uh, uh, that have difficulties in growing, which led me a lot to Paul because he's very experienced in uh, a ADA capable growing facilities, handy, handy capable. I don't know the proper mm. terminology for it without uh, upsetting anybody because it's not the intent. Uh, it's but uh, Paul has some amazing experience in the plant, and eh, I'm blessed to learn from him, share what I've learned, and then uh, grow with everybody as I grow. That's beautiful, Michael. Thank you for that. Thank you for that intro. So many things to unpack there, I think. Um, so luckily, we have a cannabis scholar here in Paul J. Von Hartman. Paul, how does one become a cannabis scholar? Well, that's an interesting question. How to become one, I think, involves developing a very deep-seated respect for nature to begin with. Mm -hmm. You have to be absolutely stunned by the miracle that we were all born into and dedicate your time and your talents and your energy to going as deep as you can into the meaningful dimensions of our existence and that's what a cannabis scholar does at least that's my take on it uh, I learned that cannabis is mankind's functional interface with the natural order and dedicated my life to teaching people why that's true <laughs> so it's a noble a noble purpose in life, um, truly. Where are you right now and where do you teach from in real life? Well, I live in Southern Oregon and I have been a filmmaker and I've written a book. Um, I've been a cannabis scholar for 30 years, traveling the world, filming the industry and participating in the industry in every way that I can. Wow from growing the plant in the Emerald Triangle back in the mid eighties to mm -hmm. just um, writing the manifesto for the Cannabis College in Amsterdam. I, I've been up to my eyeballs in, in cannabis in one way or another. Um, since I graduated from Humboldt State University in 1978, and that's wow. after I received my degree from Humboldt, I decided to do an experiment on myself. 
and find out if this stuff is good for you or if it's bad for you. And as far as I can tell, it is our fountain of youth. And I'm 67 years old. I've got a healthy 15 year old son. And I can't think of any better testimony to the power of the plant than just my own physiology. I broke my neck in a hang glider crash in 1983. And that's when, for me, cannabis went from being recreational and spiritual to being absolutely therapeutic. And I won't call it medicinal because that has a lot of baggage associated with it, especially sure. nowadays. Sure. But it is an herbal therapeutic and it mm. also uh, stimulates cell regeneration. So, yes. you know, I mean, those are things that people can increase their appreciation for this plant. Absolutely. Just by learning a couple of things. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But then, you know, you start to peel back, um, you know, the layers of the onion and you find out how many, I think, big industries are being displaced by cannabis and, um, it, you know, replaced. It's like, it is the fountain of youth. You know, if people really understood um, by using it, by testing on themselves, if they really could understand that, um, then they wouldn't be using, you know, spending as much, or at least they would be, you know, transferring that money over to their weed uh, purchases. It's also <laughs> not spending it youth for the for the planet. Yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. We need to appreciate the environmental services that cannabis offers us for healing the planet before it's too late. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Michael, I would love to, um, you know, dive into your story a little bit, you know, in Missouri. Um, it's a newly, you know, legalized state. What has it been, two years now, three years? Well, they've had medical since uh, it's gone on I think, four years now. Okay. Okay. Four years. We have um, well, I'm, There's Amendment 3. It was uh, known as Legal Mode 2022. Uh, is now known as Amendment 3 on legislation to uh, get adult use in Missouri. So it is on the ballot. Uh, I've been tied in because uh, I like to be educated on, on what's going on. Uh -huh. right. Wait, so this I, ballot upcoming? Yes, this ballot. Yeah, there's actually yes. five states that are. I don't know all five. I do know Missouri and then Arkansas had a recount and Arkansas is going to get on. But sadly for them, they don't have home grow. So uh, home grow is, I mean, the most interesting integral part, I believe, of the capability of getting the plant in the people's hands. Yes, Agreed. dispensaries and all these others, but it's not at the pocketbook level of most. Uh, I'm a caregiver myself. I came to Missouri. I had a fellow Canada member. Her husband got sick. I moved down here. They didn't have much family to help. Uh, he passed away 11 days later. I've been here ever since. Uh, they bred Yorkie Poos, and they were both caregivers with uh, multiple patients. Hmm. So I stepped in to take care of the puppies. So I breed Yorkie Poos, which is amazing. And <laughs> now I'm a cultivator in Missouri and I'm able to actually do some breeding and exercise of a, the plant counts unbelievable, even though many here complain. I came from Illinois. It was five plants, five inches or taller. So oh, wow. uh, here in Missouri, each patient can have six in flower, six in veg and six clones or seedling. And then you can have up to three patients and multiple growers per property. So there's the capability Beautiful. is you could have a 4,000 square foot home and fill it, right? Oh, so yeah. the level of being able to grow medicine for the patients themselves, have that uh, craft grow aspect and the focus and love yes. the plant requires to produce the, the, the medicine, even though we're going to stay away from medicinal, the therapeutic <laughs> quality product <laughs> so it's, stupid. Just, it's withdrawing it for me i'm a former meth cook a former alcoholic recovered addict in my mind because i don't i don't i don't i don't know that's my own thing of recovering and the i do believe there's a level to where it's no longer part of you to really incorporate it in yourself but mm -hmm. that's issue in its own <laughs> sure, i recognize sure. what i went through i've recognized what uh what got me here and i use that information to help others not to make the same mistakes but like when the addiction aspect growing is more addictive than any consumption <laughs> of the plant 
Exactly. Right. Yes. That's why we are here. It's calling all growers for a reason. You know, the show is about being a lighthouse to all those who want to grow their own. And um, even if it's just sitting on their windowsill, you know, what is it? How can we bring this plant into our lives more? You know, I'm in Texas. And so hemp is really the right. only thing that we're allowed to grow around here. Um, but, you know, it's the same, 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 but different. Right. Yeah, it's a beautiful Texas plant. One percent medical. Like it's. Yeah, it's, it's, it's unreal. insane that many states don't know because they don't get involved with the, you know, the industry as a whole. And it, it, they, they don't care enough. That's my, that's my take. Uh, right. Look at aspects of what they want, but of what's available and what's needed and what didn't work in other states. And it, it doesn't matter if you live in a state and you don't want to look at another state, this phrase, if you don't like it, move. Yeah. That, that's just a, a, an archaic and barbaric way to understand the complexity of the world we live in. Mm -hmm. And then to be able to recognize the complexity of this plant mm -hmm. and how that we only, us, uh, like how Paul puts it, is a symbiotic relationship. It's so unbelievable. And, and, and it's just took, because of the stigma and all these things, now it's changed. Times are changed. We're sitting here talking about cannabis it's going to be promoted thousands of listeners lives changed from it while lives are saved with it right now as we're speaking oh, so there's so amen. much more to focus on so all my strains i've been breeding for about 22 years i've created about 50 or so strains uh, i have 42 of them uh in my hero packs collection they all have their own hero uh, and in turn the hero will have a storyline and picked it in an nft comic book uh, what its terpene profile, how long it takes to flower, you know, the background, grandparents, things like that. I got a lot of old school, like really old school mixed with some new school and a lot of poly hybrids because people complained about, you know, certain aspects and really I focused mm -hmm. on stable parents to create whatever that was stable. And mm -hmm. I, I do a lot of testing on oh, I'm a new grower. How can I screw up today mentality mm -hmm. and go beat up the plant? And, you know, this, there's certain things like light leaks cause hermaphrodite. Uh, really? <laughs> now with displaced genetics, yes. But of the things that I've tested, it's insane what I can put the plant through and not have the issues. So the mm -hmm. level of stress and how much therapeutic growing is for me and most growers of uh, I feel regs are the best thing. Everybody should learn on them. Uh, fems are great. They're not always fems. And when you get one and you don't know, it ruins your grow and it could ruin your medicine, your, you know, your medicine forward time frame if depending on what kind of schedule you're at and if you're growing your own, if you even mm -hmm. have an option. Mm -hmm. So I like teaching people the difference between the plant and then how to manipulate it itself and how if you allow it, the plant will manipulate you. And that's that relationship to where uh, it's unlike growing anything else and to help others strengthen that. It, it's amazing. So now I'm just taking it into yeah. a newer age. We're going to be able to document it for us old schools on blockchain. We're going to go yes. with crypto like we used to back in the early 2000s. Like it's how you got anything from Amsterdam was a Bitcoin. I, 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 I'd, I'd be very interested yeah. to think how many have a a pack of seeds that they bought with a Bitcoin still, because at one time that was worth 50, almost $60,000, <laughs> wow. right? Like yeah, the seeds are valuable. <laughs> it's unbelievable. And then the change in the solutions that's within it, that yeah. it, it's just, we're able to decentralize. So bringing cannabis that is so disruptive to so many industries, we can now bring it on a decentralized platform that is mm -hmm. for the people of the people and yes. really focus on the plant for the planet. Yes, absolutely. And I've been I my card on to Paul because he's he's taught me so much in the about year, maybe year three months that we've known each other, and it's through you know uh, clubhouse and and then phone calls. Uh, I couldn't tell you how many days we've spent three or four hours on a, a call just expecting to talk fifteen minutes. You know, <laughs> wow. Uh, take advantage of that anytime I can, and then. <sighs> Uh, you know, uh, see where the road takes us and how many lives we can save and help with the plant. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. I definitely want to get back to um, what you're doing with Hero Packs and this idea of a decentralized, you know, space for this sacred information where they can't touch it. 
Um, that's very, you know, it's exciting to me. Um, but I, I'd love to just back up a little bit and, you know, find out from Paul, you know, where did your uh, journey begin with cannabis? I mean, you know, you're, you've got such an, ex, you know, you such a resume. I mean, you've done everything, but where did it start? What's your first memory of cannabis, Paul? When I left Humboldt, I worked for a year down in the Bay Area painting houses out of my 56 MGA convertible and saved up a bunch of money and, and jumped in my car in 1979 and, and drove across the country to New York City. And on the way out of Humboldt, a friend of mine gave me a big bag of, of trim and as a going away present. And that's when I decided to see if this plant was good for me or bad for me. So I drove across the country in eight days through three tornadoes. And the first person I met when I got to the East Coast was Joan Baez. What? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> and so wow. I was touched by greatness. Wow. Her greatness is just... Um, it's 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 much more powerful than any uh, you know weapon on earth. It's she is just the most amazing spirit, and to have met her when I was twenty three, mm. <laughs> she invited me to be her tour photographer, and I had a previous commitment to my my aunt was a famous ballerina. Uh, Marina Svetlova was my aunt. And she wanted me to be the photographer at her ballet school in Dorset, Vermont. And so I had to excuse myself <laughs> from Joan. From the Russian ballerina. Oh, wait, you you gave up Joan to be with your aunt? The yes. Russian ballerina, wow. Yeah, it was a previous wow. commitment. And, sure. and so... Um, from that point on, I learned that cannabis was, you know, it was like my wingman, or I guess you would say yes. <laughs> my, my, my spirit animal uh, <laughs> was a plant. And I, you know, I've studied the life sciences at Humboldt. I, I was one of the first special major graduates with a degree that combined art, wildlife behavior, journalism with a minor in aviation and i got my pilot's license the same did anybody else get that my... degree something tells me that nobody else has gotten that degree since i just, I just love no. it ah, <laughs> no big deal i what just about, wrote yeah. some stuff for Amsterdam, <laughs> you know and yeah I just ah nah no big deal but then what's fun is is when you get to know more about paul and then that's like the, the, the path we're taking. It's going to be like holding like all of our storybook. It actually display these in virtual reality, right? That's the world we live in now. Yeah. But yeah. it's yes. every story so amazing that I, I just fall in love with them again. And and I have I photographs. Shake my head. I still shake my head at them for turning down uh, Joan, but that's <laughs> it's the life of what it is. And it wouldn't be the story that it is now with no. out exactly what happened. So. If that makes it that much cooler. If you continue to kick yourself to to the end, I, it's understandable. But you, you don't, and it's 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 great that the I refer to it easy as he's an embodiment of the plant, and that's yes. how I can really categorize individuals from all walks, races, sex. It doesn't. It's the embodiment of of Mary Jane that it is what connects us all already. So, Amen. thank you, Paul, for everything you've done and. I will mute myself and let you carry on, man. I love you, dude. <laughs> man, yeah, Paul, you are truly the most fascinating man. Um, so you decided that cannabis was your spirit animal. Cannabis was your your role dog, okay? So what then? What brought you to grow? I mean, I guess, was it a natural thing for you to just grow it? Um, sounds like you lived kind of an exciting life that maybe didn't allow you to be in one place for too long um i don't no, know i was traveling internationally and so i smuggled it before i grew it <laughs> and accumulated my my uh world portfolio of kodachrome slides that 
How'd you do it? Talk to us. Talk to us. How'd well, you do it? Tell, a, tell us I'm a story. A freelance photographer. Uh -huh. And I worked on cruise ships in the early 80s. Oh, wow. That was your that was your undercover. That was your disguise. <laughs> yeah, I was I was a, uh, I went from being a sports director to being a cruise director in four months. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. All in America. <laughs> And then I became a stage manager for Royal Viking Line. And I traveled all over the world making photographs and spreading joy wherever I went. <laughs> wow. And collecting uh, specimens. Did you collect seeds wherever you went or did you just try to? I pretty much collected women. <laughs> <laughs> So can you know cannabis plants, THC plants, your women, and your women. Um, so did you did did you always then was it, was cannabis like a regular part of your daily routine, or was it more about just um, you know when you were maybe supposed to be on? If cannabis is your you know your roll dog and your spirit animal, you know what was that like for you incorporating that in that wildlife? It was seamless. Yeah. And uh, beautiful and privileged. <laughs> and intuitively, I sensed that it was the best thing for me. And I was right, because otherwise I would have probably drank myself to death. Mm. And cannabis was um, a way of dealing with the pain that I experienced after I crashed my glider in a 40 mile an hour wind mm. I uh I broke my neck in three places mm. and so it was about uh, functional uh existence at that point and I was uh, 28 when I broke my neck mm. and um I was uh SEC qualified insurance agent with the equitable out of 7,000 agents nationwide, I was number 128. And I just couldn't afford not to be mobile mm -hmm. because yeah. I was driving all over Northern California, the Bay Area. And um, so cannabis is an herbal therapeutic uh, and a, a cell regenerative agent um, was something that I have firsthand knowledge and experience with um but it, at the same time i learned that you know the distinctions between medical and recreational and mm -hmm. spiritual and uh you know all the different distinctions that people try to lay on this plant limit our understanding of it because it's all of those things all at once yes. <laughs> all the time it may not affect you the same way each time you use it. In fact, it's pretty much guaranteed to affect different people differently at different times. Right. But, you know, the, 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 the respect for nature is um, inclusive of opening yourself up to being uh, affected and to evolve across the species communication barrier that most people have been conditioned to think is real. And when cannabis invites herself into your consciousness, you learn that there's a much uh, more interesting side to this life. And it also <laughs> happens to prevent things like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. And it mm -hmm. um, is a bronchiodilator and a vasodilator, and it helps people who have spastic or neuralgic uh, disorders. Um, I was working with farms and gardens for the disabled for 15 years, building wheelchair accessible gardening systems. And so I've seen the dynamic that happens when <laughs> people can access the soil and plant their own medicine, their own herbal therapeutic. So 
talk, say a little bit more about that um, piece of what you do. This, I mean, essentially you are the, um, you know, a, an expert in ADA compliance for growth and cultivation facilities. I mean. Well, I that... have designed and built a wheelchair accessible farm and wow. gardens. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it's very important that people do that because the transfer of knowledge and passion for gardening between the generations is a very important <laughs> part of our social evolution. We have to pass on the knowledge that we have to the mm -hmm. next generation. And kids love to run around and garden standing up. And, you know, grandma in her wheelchair or, you know, whoever lands in a wheelchair, uh, a lot of people land there um, without getting old first. And, you know, those people can experience interrelationship with the plant, with other people, and particularly with kids. I've seen that dynamic um, play out a number of times. Um, and I mean, not just little kids, but, you know, young people who are learning about gardening and, and growing their own food and they're uh learning about cannabis nutrition uh, for example mm -hmm. I, I point out to people that if you're not growing cannabis for seed and stock then you are food and energy insecure because whatever you depend upon for those things may not be available very soon for a variety of reasons mm -hmm. so it's it's all part of our evolution toward uh, a livable future and it's the best news there is. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I think on that is a great note to pause the conversation to hear some messages from our sponsors. But when we come back, we will be right here with Michael Camp of Hero Packs and Paul J. Von Hartman, the cannabis scholar and most interesting most man interesting on the planet. Cannabis man in the world. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So don't go anywhere. We'll be back in two minutes, guys. See you soon. We've got breaking news for all farmers and growers out there. How would you like to defer the taxes you pay on your grow? Now you can legally, thanks to a discovery by agricultural tax attorney, Michael Berwick of the law firm Greenspoon Martyr. I have been working with tax deferral for 20 years and my team at Greenspoon Martyr in the tax area got together with our team in the cannabis area. And putting our heads together collectively, we have determined that this major tax deferral clause includes the growing of cannabis. Now, don't think that this is a new tax code clause because it's been around for over a century. Absolutely, this provision has been around for over a hundred years. Uh, it applies, it was designed for agriculture, it was put in, in force at a time when we had a much more agrarian economy, big lobby for agriculture and farming. And that definition of agriculture has grown and expanded over the years. And again, it now includes cannabis. How does it work? Essentially, it will allow the taxpayer, if done correctly through us, it will allow the taxpayer to defer all state and federal ordinary income taxes uh, for 30 years. To find out more and see if you qualify as a grower, contact Michael Berwick at 305-789-2761 or call toll-free 888-491-1120 and ask for Michael Berwick's office or just email him at Michael. It is everything you need to become an expert home grower and bring the power of the sun indoors. Style Lighting uses TCP's high-powered commercial LEDs that deliver twice the output in the market. The grow kit has a grow bag, a timer, chains to hang the light, and of course the best in the business lighting system by TCP. Check out stylelighting.shop for more information. It's the whole package. Not only is it the exclusion, we talked earlier about how, you know, how experienced is the rep you're talking with. Do they do it full time? Do they do it 5% of the time? Do they have a dedicated back office? 
how long they've been doing it. There's a lot of people trying to cash in in the insurance. The forefathers, like my company, we've been doing it for three years, and now they're trying to cash in. That's okay. We like competition, but we know that we're going to come out on top most of the time. But then, hey, 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 I said that you like cannabis oil. Hi, I'm Betty Crocker Bakes. I'm in West Hollywood, where I am showing people how to make dabs with the Swords Bike Straight Craft. You look like you cook a good meal. I do, I'm great. I infuse everything, the pasta, the infused butter. I also put it in the sauce. Before I know it, it was three days later. <laughs> what, would, what would be the first thing that you made with the oil from the Swords? Chocolate-covered coffee beans. Then do you like to get your eyes low? Yes. How low? So I can't see. You just use this machine, it's like five easy steps and boom, your eyes is low. Wait, wait, it's like an at-home kit for extraction? And you can infuse your food with it and guess what, a party every day because we can infuse our breakfast. Do you like dabs? It's an event. Well, guess what? Hmm. You can have an event in your house. Can I put lavender in there? Oh, yes. Let's jog over here to the source. If you were using the oil, what would be the first thing that you would make? You guys know me. I love me some Mexican food. The first thing I would make would be duh, some enchiladas, you know, with a lot of extra oil. This is the source by Extract Craft. You can make oil and you can make your own dabs right at home. How you feel about that? I have a rosin press. You like to squash your nuts? Well, guess what? You can still use this too. If you squish them there, you can come here and you can get it popping too. I like, I like a good dab. I don't got time to get in the car, go and get it, come back. So, voila, you have the source where you can really make your dabs at home. Easy to clean and uh, easy to work. How long does it take? Two hours. So why you dropping it like it's hot to Megan the Stallion? It does its thing, and voila, eyes low in two hours. So, would you ever make your own oil at home? Yes, I would, I would love to. here in Las Vegas at Planet 13. This is such a legendary dispensary. And so let's go check it out. <laughs> this is too good for stoners. Like this is all we need really. Here at Planet 13, you can have fresh baked gummies. So just, just deal with that. My aim is to get more people buying weeds. I would love some specialized shopping. Yes! <gasps> What's happening? Everybody gets a free pre-roll! All right, so what do you suggest? Honestly, I would do uh, baked cake. Okay. Yeah, just the mercy level so high. So I always tell people like, if a name jumps out of you, or like the way it looks jumps out of you, nine times out of ten, you're gonna like it. Okay. Yes. It's like a playground for cannabis lovers. Hi everyone, welcome back to Calling All Growers. I'm your host, Liz Grow. I'm here tonight with two of the most interesting growers that I have met in a very, very long time. Michael Camp of Hero Packs and Paul J. Von Hartman. 
a cannabis scholar and the author of Cannabis Versus Climate Change. Gentlemen, welcome back to Calling All Growers. Thank you for having Are you guys me. having Thank fun? You. Are you having fun? Having a blast. Absolutely. Awesome. I So I want to dive um, right back into hero packs in this concept of buying something in real life, i.e. seeds, seed packs from a breeder translates to an NFT and living on the blockchain and having some presence um, in, you know, Web3. Talk to us a little bit about that, Michael. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, hero packs itself, uh, each hero has its own pack of seeds, hence hero. Okay. Uh, with it, you know, I've got a, it's all with NFTs, it's on art. And I know I'm, I'm going to show them here, but I'll get them in. I'll just, this is So this Jack, is a hero. This is right? a hero. This is Who's Jack, this? This is Jack Terror. <laughs> all right. So he's a gangster bunny. And then all the crosses are just different color bunnies. So the same as the concept and i had this you've been working on this for years before i understood about the, the you know all the different characteristics on an individual ten thousand piece nft art collection and how each one's one of one through all these random changes right oh yeah oh yeah well i already was doing that in the level of this and now it just fit oh well, here's a place to put what i was already building so this is jack terror it's it's strain is jack terror I pronounced it wrong forever and called it Jack Herrera. And, <laughs> Jack, and I was told it's Jack, it's terror, like terror. So yeah. this is Jack Terror, and he's the badass gangster and with a great strain, right? An old school. That is and so Jack awesome. Used to say that. <laughs> yeah, you know, Dan and still Jack, says and Jack that. Jack used to say that, and, and, and Dan yeah. still does. And Dan yeah. still says that. That's how I learned how to say it. And he's, <laughs> he was so gentle in telling me that. And, you know, you'd never forget. And I love so it's all, that you it's just all commemorate that. Line, right? Yes. And that's the level of what we get to invoke and everything. what everybody's wanting and the depth within these, these NFTs. But now because rug pulls and the issues within it, doesn't matter which blockchain it was built on, Hero Packs is on. Uh, ethereum right so mm -hmm. okay and it's just because it's recognized and it has the largest open marketplaces and 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 i'm not afraid of the competition because it's a thing of its own that mm -hmm. the other projects out there this only complements that's right, right. This, is, this is a whole tool shed full of tools as opposed to just a tool to put in the shed and, and it's because of the stories and the concepts with it right and and we all have them like this is dan mccann this is the individual I moved down here to Missouri to help. And my friend's That's husband, awesome. an amazing guy who was a caregiver, is now the caregiver of all the heroes of the hero packs. So I wow. have a Dungeons and Dragons, at least concept to this first collection, and it's for card games. And being able to actually have D&D &D books and levels of gameplay through gamification of match three on your phone, and it going in and being able to go buy your avatar to wander around in different metaverses. That's the world we live in now. Right. Initially, it's to help onboard individuals uh, of what NFTs are. And that's why I have Mocana Cup of Growing Competition of these four strains, right? Okay. It's all the perpetual story and the ease into the education, hop into the roller coaster because it's going to be a ride. So <laughs> go ahead and take it easy. You know, we give you the calm and then we're going to flash you with the reality of what the world is today by showing how we're you the utility within projects, which must must exist for a project now. It's not absolutely. Of, I mean, an analogy I will use is literally you could took shit, threw it at the wall, took pictures of it, sold it for millions because it if it had the right promotion and market, right? Right. Now you can't do that. So it, it's a level that, but it forced the creatives to actually dive in and more so the ones that were already immersed in it to come out because mm -hmm. issues with something that was simple. But it's bridging the communication between the two. So there's all these bridges of it. communication. It all requires education and then fun stories go along the way. So Dan McCann is Ghost Sky Har OG Blueberry Frost. And mm. he's the caregiver of all the heroes. He's got a little breeding strategy book here that has my queen, the queen bee. All right, so this logo here, uh, because cannabis is a skeleton key, um, it was designed by the original lead singer of Journey. What? Uh, 
Robert Fleischman, who wrote Wheel in the Sky. That's who designed this logo. And then my Canacamp logo, which is on the back of my shirt, but I'll send the logo to uh, Dan uh, to get put up on here when you guys do that. But also through that, because my one life coach is James Reardon. He's Jim Morrison, expert of the world, will break on through autobiography, Jim Morrison, The Doors, 43 yeah. others, Oliver Stone's autobiography, things of that such. I always had good cannabis and good edibles. So I got invited to parties like with Man Cow and all kinds of other radio. And then Chips Enough named my app. He's the bass player of Enough's Enough. I was doing driver development, dirt racing in a NASCAR. So I'm bringing all these celebrities with. And it's all, it was just wild. And it was, um, it was the momentum of what the, what was to be at that time. I learned a lot. There's lots of sad sorrows within it that I make sure people don't sign up for, or at least recognize sure. going in too, because marketing in NASCAR is vicious. Oof, yeah, um, well, so welcome to cannabis. So you decided to get into cannabis. Oh, yeah, ironic. Exactly. Prepped me for this because, well, here's my rep. I tell people when I was in heavy, the, the drug gaming with crystal meth, that game barely prepped me for surviving marketing on, in the back end and, and behind the scenes of NASCAR. It was mm -hmm. so vicious and so, oh, I bet it, it was unbelievable. So it's I had you a needed cannabis of already being in this evil level. Yet here's something legal that uh, the viciousness and the hostility it it, it 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 I don't know, it almost yeah. diminishes the drug level. So and it's all because sure. dollar amount and things that go through and what it takes to work and you know and right you can step back and breathe right and take a right. nice deep intake with some mother nature. That's right. Everything can calm down and make a little more sense, even me. Right? That's, and that's right. Where I use it for many different reasons. Yeah. But then I, and I think the I heroes... would love to. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. I, I'm so sorry. I just, oh, I good. feel you're like good. that what, what you just said was just such a beautiful kind of segue into cannabis versus climate change. You okay. know, if we don't have our natural resources, if we don't have our climate, we, we have nothing, you know, and we can... Um, so yeah, I just, I, I, you know, it's so fun to hop between the NFT world and the world world that we live in. So Paul, oh, can you talk to us a little bit about cannabis versus climate change? Sure. Um, I have a, a book? book and a film, yes. uh, the film is on Vimeo. You can see it. Uh, it's about an hour long and I have other films, short films, um, and some films from Europe that I made. And, um, I point out to people that time is the NFT of the 21st century Ooh. and that cannabis solves so many global problems all at the same time that by investing in cannabis, what I refer to as Gaia therapeutic industry, then you're buying time for our children for everybody's children because everybody is looking for value to invest in but time is <laughs> the only thing we can't make more of and we don't know how much time we have left to make a difference and so it just makes sense that if there's one crop that produces complete essential nutrition and clean energy from the same organic harvest and only one crop that does that. And it's the same crop, the only crop that produces a sufficient volume of atmospheric aerosol terpenes that are needed to replenish Earth's atmosphere after the deaths of half of the world's boreal forests and marine phytoplankton that used to produce twice the volume of aerosol terpenes as they do now. And cannabis is the only crop that can replenish Earth's atmosphere with aerosol terpenes in the time that we may have left to make a difference. And the reason that's important is because the aerosol terpenes refract solar UVB radiation away from the planet. The solar UVB radiation <laughs> that's cauterizing this planet. Solar UVB radiation. UVB, I'm taking notes. Ultraviolet 
wavelength B <laughs> as opposed to A and C. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, uh, UVB you radiation. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Paul. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's great. About Keep it going. Half. I mean, yeah. UVB radiation suppresses immune response, causes genetic mutation, abnormal cell division, reduced harvests, increased materials degeneration, and perhaps most concerning is the increased solubility of mercury, arsenic, and selenium compounds out of aqueous solution. And so the increased solubility of mercury and arsenic and selenium compounds is the increased tox toxicity of the hydrologic cycle of the planet under increasing levels of UVB radiation, which people are, they're aware of it. You can go to the NASA website and see a graph that shows the UVB is increasing. There's no ambiguity to the data whatsoever. But there's only one solution to it. We have to grow as much cannabis as we can as fast as we can and pray it's not too late. Because time is the limiting factor in the equation of survival. And cannabis is the only crop that does all those things all at the same time. And so I started a, a crypto uh, wallet for cannabis block crypto. Hello. You've just been holding on to that this whole conversation. Yeah, you know, wow. I mean, wow, what is it called? Uh, cannabis block crypto. Cannabis block crypto. I, I got the domain name from Unstoppable Domains, and I have a, a MetaMask wallet set up. I can send you the, the numbers for yeah. it, the public address for it. And, you know, if people want to assign value to something in connection with their uh, cryptocurrency, time is the best value there is because there is no money on a burned out planet. Right. Right. So, so the, what, what, people would do is use this cannabis block crypto as their wallet. They would keep their money in this wallet to support the, um, you know, just to, to support the work to, um, you to know, I don't know. The transition from fossil fuels to biofuels mm -hmm. and from centrally concentrated wealth to globally distributed wealth mm -hmm. because regional production of energy that heals the planet is Gaia therapeutic industry and Gaia therapeutic industry is determined by the scale of production needed to heal the atmosphere. So if we couldn't make one thing out of cannabis or eat the seeds or do anything with it, we'd still have to grow it as fast as we can for its environmental services. Mm, right. But we're lucky we can services. make complete essential nutrition and clean energy and tree-free paper and biodegradable plastics mm. and regenerate the soil, air, mm. water, and wildlife. Cannabis isn't just essential for man. It's a unique nutritional resource for <laughs> every creature on this earth in one way or another. All systems are connected. And that's right. the beauty. I, I was a commercial diver for several years. In addition to some other things I've done. Of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. I'm not surprised. I used to spend 10 hours a day underwater listening to my own breath and the sounds of the ocean. And then I became an underwater photographer in Hawaii. Mm. And then I was a director for Sea Shepherd. And so, so I was immersed in nature at a level that has yeah. helped me, me to contact uh, the untamed spirit that 
exists within us all. Yes. God, that's so beautiful. And I think so many people turn to cultivation of the cannabis plant to feel that, you know, to tap into their, you know, primitive self and their whole self for truly lack of a better term. Um, I'm wondering, so, you know, this is a show for growers and, you know, sustainability is, is a very, it's a trend and um, it's a very important thing. And it means a lot. It means different things to different people and different organizations and brands. You know, I guess my question to you, Paul, um, would be what does sustainability in the cannabis industry mean to you? And what is your ask or call to the industry to be more sustainable? What Get, you know, what's that action? Well, first of all, we have to accept that pollen is part of the natural order and that we have to get past our homocentric view of this plant and excluding hemp from cultivation by home gardeners is just indefensible. I appreciate that people want to protect their genetics. And I mm -hmm. used to grow sensimia myself. And so I know that there is an issue with pollen flying around in the air. But you have to choose between sensimia or irreversible systemic collapse. Mm -hmm. And we're facing irreversible systemic collapse that is probably going to come in the form of nuclear annihilation, the way it looks, because the environment, our economics, and our social order are all breaking down. And growers have to recognize that their ability to grow this plant is a blessing that is to be shared with friends, family, community, and the world. And that, yes, we can grow sensimia. You got it. It takes a little bit of uh, more work, maybe. It takes a little bit of cunning, but mm -hmm. it can be done. But we have to grow hemp to make energy. And the good news is that marijuana stems can also be used to make energy. And so yes. we can take all the waste streams from all of the different types of cannabis cultivation that there are and feed them into a uh, biofermentation infrastructure that produces ultimately electricity. It's the most efficient way to produce clean energy on the planet and every grower knows how to do it. So get to work and start making some real money because it's yes. a multi-trillion dollar industry and we're right. just letting it slide. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is funny? just, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I mean, you know, we're humans that so we do a lot of stupid things, I think. Um, we're young but species. Young oh. species. Yes, that's fair. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I, I sure am glad that, that you know, folks like you exist. Um, you know, wise, um, what's the word? Guides, you know, through through this lifetime, you know, collecting, gathering information, um, synthesizing that information and then sharing it with your community. That's just so important. So, you know, cannabis versus climate change, um, get that book, get that book. Um, I would and like pretty much at, everything that's coffee. in that book is at my, uh, California cannabis ministry blog. Oh, I awesome. started the individual secular non-religious California cannabis ministry the year my son was born in 2007. Oh, wow. Okay. And he was Great. born on Thomas Jefferson's birthday, oddly enough. Oh, wow. In the state yeah, of Jefferson. Lover. Yeah, it's April 13th. <laughs> wow. One week away born on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, so, Paul, how can people find you? Well, my California Cannabis Ministry blog Mm -hmm. is online and my okay. email address is project peace at yahoo.com i started peace. project peace in 1991 when i learned that cannabis could be used to grow energy and food from the same harvest 
the significance of that is you don't induce food insecurity and malnutrition by growing your energy, which other energy crops induce food insecurity. Mm -hmm. Cannabis improves food security. I taught the United Nations it's Food beautiful. and Agriculture Organization about hemp seed nutrition when they didn't want to know. It was 2003 and they had declared war on cannabis and I kept bombarding them with the science and the nutritional profiles of cannabis seed. And I finally got through to one of the, the, the OGs <laughs> at mm -hmm. uh, the UN who was livid that there was this plant that could feed the world. And nobody told him about it. Oh God. It's just, it, you know, isn't that the saddest thing is it's just the, there, the, prohibition worked and they kept the information from us for so long, effectively crippling us. And, you know, here we are um, dealing with that, picking up the pieces and trying as we might to educate, 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 to save our world. But, you know, thank you for the work that you're doing, Paul. Project Peace at yahoo.com. Um, you guys email Paul J. Von Hartman if you have any questions. Um, Michael Camp, I, I want to know about um, have Hero Packs have launched already? Um, uh, how can people I find a, them? Talk to us about up. It's at uh, www.heropacks with a Z H E R O P A C K Z dot com. And uh, we're going to be we're looking at having minting on uh, December 7th. Uh, we were wanting to have it before, but with the digital growing competition I'm doing to focus on Hero Packs, because it's the discount code for the, any of the sponsors and uh, collaborators that come in. So uh, right now we have Grove Bags, MJ Arsenal that I have in my yes. hat. Awesome. Uh, Grove, I guess I guess so Grove Bags, and they're at grovebags.com. Uh, Hero Packs with a Z gets you 7% off there, and it's a curing bag technology. We could talk hours on it. It's, it's oh, I love Grove Bags. I love Jack. I, I love it. Yeah, I just, it's a He's solution. It should be implemented in dispensaries and all kinds of other things that even with Paul and all of this, that it takes a platform to go on. So I create those, those things that deserve spotlights, right? But we do it with philanthropy on levels, and then we bring in companies that are solutions like MJ mm -hmm. Arsenal, it's the solution for having a sweet smoking apparatus when you're doing your yeah. bats. Right? Yeah. And so for 15% off Hero Packs, uh, I got New Tools, which is newtools.com. Uh, and Tools is with an S, not a Z, but Newt, N U T E, uh -huh. tools.com. And they've got like a pH pen and some handy little growing tools. So you know, there's 10% off there. And then my favorite thing, which is right there, is fish shit. So yes, fish, fish, shit, <laughs> uh, fish shit. I don't grow without it. So if you haven't grown with it, uh, Hero Packs will get you twenty percent off. Whoa! Uh, yeah, that's a lot huge. of people. I know it's huge, exactly, and it's expensive because you invest in your grow. It's that simple. Right. You know, right. Uh, if you it's... get a large enough product, get smart on it, go through, and mm -hmm. come go in as a wholesaler. And yeah. just get it to your house and you can, there's ways to get it discounted if you knew, use enough. And the people there are just phenomenal. They are so they're good. Grower. Hero yes. Packs will get you 20% off and it will totally change your grow. But with that, <laughs> when awesome. Paul was talking on seeds, uh, Hero Packs, one of the main, we give back to 420, a bunch of foundations that we're calling and we, we provide relief, R-E-L-E-A-F. And there's 420 POWs, veterans, a couple charities that I've worked with uh, that focus on those. And then uh, a couple that aren't that, like Project Michelangelo Foundation, which was founded by Jojo Sason. Jojo Sason is the physical therapist expert for space travel for NASA. Uh, he's also Filipino, so a country where they're killing people for hemp. The new mm -hmm. president's name's fucking Bong Bong. Sorry for the F-bomb, but come <laughs> on. So, you know. It's necessary. Right. And so I work with Jojo and, and, and do, I do things there in the Philippines and raise awareness for progeria. And then I'm, I'm leveraging cannabis conversations on a level now because I get to be tra transparent about everything in my life. Beautiful a therapist. So science and data. I mean, he's a Filipino before all. And, and then he's still NASA. So he's government property. This guy does so many crazy, awesome things. And I'm blessed to be in, involved with him. It's how I do what I do, right? Surround myself with people far, far yes. smarter than myself. <laughs> yourself, yes. right? There's levels we all learn from each other. 
So with that, that's then uh, there's A of Africa, and that's A of Africa.org. She literally saves lives in West Ghana with hemp seed oil. And thanks to Paul and his connections, I was able to go and talk with some people. And, and now instead of sending them just seeds so they can grow and then save lives, we can get hemp seed oil so cheap, it's ridiculous. Yeah. The shipping connects down in LA. So now we get it from Canada to LA and we're getting it for, I'm talking, it's unbelievable mm. how cheap of uh, getting kilos of oil that used to be, you know, so while some are saying, oh, it's oversaturated and it's doing this and it's doing that, but it's, there's so many other ways to make a profit on the plant that you can focus and turn. And, and, and if you want to say sacrifice, you're not really, you just got to grow it properly to right. other things like seed. So then we have hemp seed oil. So then I can go to Jojo and say, Hey, in the Philippines, how many lives from malnutrition add that to how many you're killing with hemp and cannabis already. And then put all malnutrition on top of it because that is that is what you're doing. Mm. So it's being able to leverage and and having this Forrest Gump life and a weed as <laughs> cannabis as a skeleton key. I've recently got a job being the vice president of the Global Strategic Initiative for the ABA's Television Network. So wow. the American Basketball Association wow. is the largest professional sports league in the United States. Uh, they're also 70% owned by minority. Wow. And they have a business incubator and it ties into NFTs and a level of an unbelievable concept of what is present now. A hundred plus channels on Roku. And, in, and in, I went in to be cre the create curator, if you will, of their cannabis network. And then after wow. and half with Joe Newman, there was that and so much more because of the capacity that cannabis has made in my life, but that I could reflect and unpack in an hour and a half and listen at least half of the time. That's my worst thing is listening, but <laughs> I'm also, well, I feel passionate can... enough. I won't, I don't, I don't feel bad about cutting anyone off and it's not to hurt their feelings. Yeah, you got uh, a lot of passion. I cognitively understand, but yeah. there's just times I'm not going to get an opportunity like this. And I, mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I yeah. wrapped you on and the reciprocation was unreal and we're getting ready to unpack just some Gosh. unbelievable. So now like sponsors that they- It's so exciting. I wouldn't- this, Right? I wouldn't, so I might not even watch this and they're going to be on a cannabis network for the ABA. Right. The I want to make you know, sure like that everybody knows. Cannabis teams. You want to, yes. I, right? I just, there's so much. Cannabis teams to fix. Cause there's it's a insane. Whole of it. And the, I, the, I want to make sure people know where they can get you, where they can reach you before we have to end the show. Right. So if, Absolutely. where can people find you, Michael? Well, for uh, just, the ABA stuff, Abigail TV.com. ABA okay. and then G A L E like a gale wind. And okay. we'll have to get Joe on here because he the story of when he told me why he made, it was just beautiful. Uh, oh, that's and, awesome. Uh, okay. But uh, yeah, that's abigailtv.com. Okay, great. Then, oh, uh, that's where you can get information on the television network and the ABA. And it'll bring you links into their abagoldcoin.com. And there's like seven different yeah. links that's layered unbelievably like it should for something as advanced and large as it is. So it's Very incredible yeah it's it's really and then we great. also have hero packs and then hero packs.com hero packs exactly. with a Z. Where, exactly. um, we yell off a mouth yep. loud enough and that's where i love paul because he's been doing it for twice as long as i have his neck's been broke as long as i've been alive so you oh. know it's like and in, in, in the voice it, 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 not, not enough ears hear it and then and the ones mm -hmm. that do, it's like there's so much yes because there's work behind it still we can't stop that it's not worth the effort and that's why we don't stop right yes take those beacons and that's right platforms to go through because the levels of what the plant does and on platforms yes. like this so thank you so much for having us that you can we get to translate what we're doing to a, a new group of listeners and it is it's that capability and it, we, we do get to leverage and then my, like my slogan is we grow stronger together and it's not just on the cave, the plant itself. It's in every aspect of life. It's just absolutely, absolutely. So, but you can uh, to get so a beautiful. Me, email me. You can email me at honeycombhydro uh, at gmail.com.
Awesome. Honeycomb hydro at gmail.com. And I love that about the calling all growers show and network and community. You know, these are, um, you know, growers who are working very hard, who are carving out their niche in their respective spaces in cannabis, and they are giving you their email addresses. So thank you, Paul and Michael, for joining me for this conversation tonight. I loved it so much. You both are so interesting. I have Liz, pages I've got, of notes. I've got one more call to action for you. Any growers okay. listening uh, at mocanacup.com, M-O-C-A-N-N-A-C-U. P mocanacup.com. Great. Where you great. can register to grow in the digital competition. It's seeds drop in November on Veterans Day. So it'll be a 16 week campaign documenting it as you go on Facebook and Instagram, shared on all these fun little things we're talking about now. And then uh, tied into a physical event with legislation going through for judging, unlike any other, because we can gift three ounces. So uh, we're going to leverage the changes cool. that happen before they happen. And if when they happen, we're going to be ready to catch it, you know, and caress it like the plant does to us. And you know, I love uh, that registration is open for two more weeks. So I make sure everything Canadian registrations close here uh, seven days. So Wednesday, okay. next week. but uh, the States are pretty much Halloween. Uh, Great. I out by then and then the uh yeah we do seed drop on the 11th and it's that's uh, great awesome event. this is so exciting mocanacup.com you heard it here first cannabis versus climate change paul j von hartman and michael camp of hero camps again thank you so much for coming on calling all growers um calling all growers is produced by pro cannabis media and grow house media with generous support from our sponsors Thank you guys so much. We love you. If you're listening right now, please go show our sponsors some love. Um, I'll see you in two weeks on Wednesday, October the 26th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Until then, I'm Liz Grow, and I'm calling all growers. See you next time. We've got breaking news for all farmers and growers out there. How would you like to defer the taxes you pay on your grow? Now you can legally thanks to a discovery by agricultural tax attorney, Michael Berwick of the law firm Greenspoon Martyr. I have been working with tax deferral for 20 years and my team at Greenspoon Martyr in the tax area got together with our team in the cannabis area and putting our heads together collectively, we have determined that this major tax deferral clause includes the growing of cannabis. Now, don't think that this is a new tax code clause because it's been around for over a century. Absolutely. This provision has been around for over 100 years. Uh, it applies. It was designed for agriculture. It was put in, in force at a time when we had a much more agrarian economy, big lobby for agriculture and farming. And that definition of agriculture has grown and expanded over the years. And again, it now includes cannabis. How does it work? Essentially, it will allow the taxpayer, if done correctly through us, it will allow the taxpayer to defer all state and federal ordinary income taxes uh, for 30 years. To find out more and see if you qualify as a grower, contact Michael Berwick at 305-789-2761 or call toll-free 888-491-1120 and ask for Michael Berwick's office or just email him at Michael dot Berwick, that's B U R W I C K at GMLaw dot com. Hey, you want to grow your own plants? Check out Style Lighting's Grow Kit. It is everything you need to become an expert home grower and bring the power of the sun indoors. Style Lighting uses TCP's high powered commercial LEDs that deliver twice the output in the market. The Grow Kit has a grow bag, a timer, chains to hang the light, and of course, the best in the business lighting system by TCP. Check out stylelighting.shop for more information. It's the whole package. Not only is it the exclusion. As a broker, we have access to many, many cannabis carriers. So I will go in with two or three 
uh, quotes for people. The quotes might be 20,000 for one, 22,000 for another, 17,500 for another. Pretty close among the three. What I tell people is it's not the pricing, it's what's included and not included, meaning exclusions. An exclusion in layman's terms is just something that's not included. It's not on the menu, so it's just not included. But if you don't know that, if no one shows you that on page 71 of a 150 page policy, you're not gonna know, no one knows. I never met one person that says they read an insurance policy. If you do, you know, I got some property in Florida for you. Vegas at Planet 13. This is such a legendary dispensary. And so let's go check it out. <laughs> this is too good for stoners. Like, this is all we need, really. Here at Planet 13, you can have fresh baked gummies. So just, just deal with that. My aim is to get more people buying weeds. I would love some specialized shopping. Yes! <gasps> What's happening? Everybody gets a free pre-roll! All right, so what do you suggest? Honestly, I would do uh, Okay. Yeah, just the mercy level so high. So I always tell people like, if a name jumps out of you, or like the way it looks jumps out of you, nine times out of ten you're gonna like it. Okay. Yes. Planet 13. It's like a playground for cannabis lovers.